that's not what success is. Success is, oh, it's an action. It's a, it's an actual thing you do. And it's a thing you do towards something that you say that you want. It's kind of subjective. So only you would be able to know if you were a success or not. Can you like look back on it and say I was a success? All my moves, are they contributing to my happiness? Each time I can answer the yes to that question, then I kind of feel like I'm going in the right direction. I think we've all done things in our past where, yeah, it had certain successes to it, but it didn't really make us happy. How you actually define it for yourself is what I think matters. And that's wealth, and, you know, what is wealth or what is wealthy? And wealth just means that you have an abundance of something. We automatically talk about money but it could be many, many things that you are wealthy in. Well, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back once again to the Ascent Podcast. And I'll be your host today as we dive into, I think, one of the most important things you can really do in life, and that's to have a strategy and a roadmap on how you want to succeed in life. So let's get into talking about success. And where I want to start with this is the term success. Um, and obviously there's a Webster def definition of what success may mean, but success looks different and feels different to each individual. When you hear the word success, what does that mean? Vince, I'll come to you first. Give us a little bit of background and what your thoughts are about what success means. Success means for me, reaching my goals, whatever they be. And you know, clearly as we all evolve on our own journeys, we all have different priorities in life. So when I was graduating as a young one out of high school, you know, those goals, those uh, plans, um, obviously are very different from where I am today. And so part of that is you know, setting those goals, setting those uh, achievements, what do I want to do? Where do I spend my time? And then the thing that really has evolved is how, how do I know that I'm on the path of success? What are some of those metrics? And then the biggest aha for me has been the reflection side. You know, looking back, it's seeing, okay, yeah, maybe this journey has taken me on a path that um, is definitely not what I envisioned. However, it is what I, I needed, I wanted, the universe wanted to put in front of me to achieve that. So, and then of course, the other thing too, besides you know, reflection and, and holding that space and being present is the gratitude piece, is acknowledging and, uh, and thinking myself and being, um, being kind. Thanks for sharing that. Chris, what about you? When someone says, what's your definition or what does success look like to you? Well, typically success is going to be like, like as Vince said, it's going to be, it's going to be intertwined and wrapped around um, or wrapped in uh, some goal setting and some goal achieving. Um, but you know what? I'm going to take this a little bit. I'm going to take this a little bit deeper for me as, as especially as you would get older um, or more mature, let's use that word. I don't want to use older, uh, more mature. Um, it really, for me, is tied to happiness. I mean, you can have all the finance, you know, a lot of people, I think a lot of people look at success and, and, and really want to tag it to uh, financial success. Now that's great and, and wonderful all in, in, in the grand scheme of things. But I think at the end of the day, can you look and say, hey, as someone who believes they are successful in life, are you happy? And that's one of the things that I tend to, to look back on, look, you know, I kind of springboard back and forth with every time I do the things that I do today. Um, as we all know, you know, I've gone through uh, a number of changes, a, a, a number of challenges. Uh, and and we, we came to see, I, I seem to keep it moving in the right direction, but I keep going back to all my moves. Are they making, are they contributing to my happiness? And each time I can answer the yes to that question, then I kind of feel like I'm going in the right direction. Believe me, we've all, I think we've all done things in our past where, yeah, it had certain successes to it, but it didn't really make us happy. 
And for me, happiness is, means a lot to me. You know, the fact that I can smile, uh, I can feel good about myself, feel good about what I'm doing. Um, at the end of the day, that's what matters to me. Very well said. Uh, happiness is, is an important piece of it. We're definitely going to talk more about that as we move forward. Uh, Jerry, how about you share a little bit success, what that looks like, what that feels like for you? Success. You know, it's interesting. Success has always um, been one of those things where when I was younger, I used to think it was you had to be like a, you know, Tony Robbins or like, uh, you know, Michael Jackson or uh, Michael Jordan or, you know, those guys are successes because they have accolades, they have the awards and, um, <clears throat> you know, everybody loves them, right? Success, money, fame, fortune, all that type of stuff, right? But it wasn't until I heard Earl Nightingale uh, uh, speak and he defined success as the pro progressive achievement of a worthy goal or idea or something along those lines or like realization. And I was like, oh, wait, it's, it's not, it's not the end. That's not what success is. Success is, oh, it's an action. It's a, it's an actual thing you do. And, and it's a thing you do towards something that you say that you want. And only it's kind of subjective. So only you would be able to know if you were a success or not. So when you go to bed at night, can you like look back on it and say I was a, a success or not? Only like no external thing would be able to point it out to you, which points to what Vincent was saying is being um, um, introspective or, uh, you know, doing the self check to even see if, if, you know, the actions that you took that day were towards that worthy goal, was it moving you towards that ideal? And w which would then boil down to, you know, what uh, Chris is even saying, where it's just like, um, it would be like that recognition, the gratitude for the things that you do have, the things that you were able to uh, create. And so in other words, if you were to ask people, you know, would they be a success? Maybe most people would say no, but if they really t took the time, maybe a month or two, they would probably find out that they kind of are. It's probably, they just didn't have a chief definite aim. So it kind of was just going all over the place, you know, but success is something that's kind of, it almost seems like it might even be inherent to why we even do things in this world. So, yeah. I want to echo that from my position when I talk about success, exactly what Jerry was saying. I think a lot of it has to do with upbringing and what we are told, I guess, by whether it's media or the other prognosticators out there of what success is or who is successful. And like you talk about, you know, athletes and entertainers and people like that. So, you know, that is success. Uh, but when you really boil it down to, you know, that, that, that more personal level, it really is more focused to what I kind of what Chris was alluding to, too, is that inward versus outward piece, you know, is success something that you have to look like to the outside world or is it more of that internal piece? Um, what I like to say is, and this is kind of a, a newer learning for me as, you know, go work my way through life and another word that I'm going to use, which has a, a certain meaning because it gets thrown out there and people automatically re react to it. But again, it's something that how you actually define it for yourself is what I think matters. And that's wealth. Uh, because it's another thing, you know, what is wealth or what is wealthy? Uh, and wealth just means that you have an abundance of something. We automatically add it a talk about money, but it could be family. It could be friends. It could be many, many things that you are wealthy in. So for me, that's a new focus for me when I start talking about being successful. I want to be wealthy. I want to have depth in those different areas, those different places in my life. Um, that's to me, 
where I want to succeed is just to build that wealth and have that wealth in those different silos, not just a dollars and cents definition of wealth, but the other pieces of it. And that, that, this was really important to me. That said, I want to add this question to it. And Chris brought it up. Uh, talk about happy or happiness, because I think there is a direct correlation between how we look at success and are we happy or fulfilled or satisfied? Any of those terms that get thrown out when, you, when you're talking about that. And I think that's a key piece of it is to look at that and say, you know, am I, if I am happy, does that mean that I am successful? Or do, does he, do you have to have the big house and the nice car and be able to take, you know, 35 vacation days a year and travel the world. And is is that what success looks like and feels like, or could it be a much smaller thing, much more fulfilling things that make you happy? You know, wealth and happiness for me, for me has always been something that has, um, flip flop. It's kind of been, you know, it's, it's been the external views of how, wealth and success and and happiness is defined and then through my own journey realizing that you know actually that does not make me happy you know the big houses and all that stuff uh although seem like a goal for all uh i remember i remember a time where we were we were moving from a very little house to a very large house and i I could feel myself um, just feel sad or in resistance. And I was spending a lot of time wondering, you know, why am I doing this? And, and we had, we had these, um, because we're in such a little, little house, we were always around each other. We were always seeing each other. We were always, doing stuff, uh, with an eyesight or earshot. And, um, and there was so much laughter and I recognized in that experience that, you know, that is something that I really appreciate. That's something that I enjoy having, especially with my kids is the ability to always be connected and around and seeing and coexisting versus what others who are portrayed in media or, or shows or movies. It's like these mansion homes where, you know, there's a zip code in every single, you know, wing, <laughs> you know, and, and, um, you know, there's, there's little interaction and I, and I can also recognize the ability for, you know, individuals to have space and to, you know, have their own thing going on and whatnot. Uh, however, for me, it's because I did not grow up with that level of, um, you know, connectedness. Uh, that's definitely something that for, for me to be happy, it's me to have that. Um, and it's the experiences. You know, wealth for me is beyond money. It's, it's what money as a tool can do for me in my life is it's travel. It's, uh, it's the things that, you know, when I, when I study or research others who are on their deathbed, you know, the questions asked, you know, what, what do you, what will you miss most? What will you think of on your deathbed as you're transitioning to the next whatever? It's like, well, it's clearly not. I wish I would have made another million dollars. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's typically, boy, I, I really, I really wanted to spend more time with these individuals and, and laugh. And I had, a, I had a thought while Vin was talking and um, Jerry was talking, and uh, I've always had a weird relationship with money for some strange reason, and I, I've talked about it. A, briefly over the course of our friendships. Um, and I try not to tie that to overall success. I think it helps if you have a, if you're keeping score 
and I think a lot of and and a lot of people I think do keep score. I don't like that scorekeeping, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's that dirty little thing that you know that you kind of walk away and you're like, ugh. Um, but truthfully, I think that you should be. Uh, they should kind of while they don't go hand in hand. I think that they can um, they can make your life a little bit easier. And then some, I don't think, uh, for me, I don't think I tie it to the overall happiness, but I think what it does, it creates a little more uh, creature comfort per se, per se. Um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get away from that whole thing. I mean, we were talking about uh, big houses and big cars. Um, you know, I live in a one bedroom condo, um, which is quite cozy and safe for me. And, uh, it's done me well. I've got, I'm sitting here, uh, broadcasting from two blocks off the ocean. And so, I mean, I think that's kind of cool. So I look at some of the, um, the things that some of the intrinsic things that we don't necessarily count as our blessings. And I'm, I'm trying to encapsulate it all to, you know, as I move forward in this, uh, quote unquote, new state of consciousness. So, you know, I, I think I mentioned before we went on broadcast that I had a new opportunity that I just took a, a week ago. And on paper, the financial rewards are strong and great. And probably if I play my cards right, I'm going to make some money. I've never made, I'm going to, I'm going to hit another stratosphere as far as uh, dollars I make. Um, and I'm excited about that, but I don't want that to be the, sole thing that drives me because I think that that I don't I think I think when you do that I think your priorities become askew and you you tend to look past all the other things that are really great on the journey for at least for me you know I can only speak for me um but that's how I feel and, and as I try to reshape my life moving forward from in real time and from this day forward um that's what I'm I, I'm trying to um download into my consciousness that don't, as a matter of fact, I was told that in a meeting this week, don't get tripped up on the monies, get tripped up on the, you know, get, get engulfed in, get ingrained and get, um, immersed in the journey of where this thing can, is what it's about. And so, I mean, I heard that and it really stopped me in my tracks. So that's the kind of the, the overarching right now that I'm trying to really, you know, this is the repetitiveness of that message. I'm trying to keep it going in my head, like, because otherwise you get engulfed in, you know, if it, I think a lot of people get engulfed in the money aspect and they, and they really aren't being true to themselves when they say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tied to the money. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think we end up losing sight of everything around it. Like I said, well, what just happened to me, uh, two, uh, say two weeks ago with the near death experience I had, it really, put me into a reevaluation stage, a state of my, my life. And I'm, you know, I'm valuing the relationships that I have. I'm valuing the fact that I've through, through, you know, we live, you know, we talk about this all the time. We, we, us here in Hawaii, we live in a, we're in a relationship state and those relationships are so valuable to our day-to-day -day existence, you know, having people, you know, you didn't check on me yesterday, Vin. And I, you know, I realized that last night when I went to bed, I was like, Vin didn't check in with me. And he always checked, you know, I guess I'm getting spoiled because <laughs> I'm used to Vin checking in. Even when I don't want him to check in on me, he checks in on me. And I ultimately, ultimately we go through that. When we, I get off the phone with him or I get off the mess. I'm like, I'm lucky to have this guy around. Even though he's annoying every once in a while, I'm lucky to have him around. <laughs> so <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, that's that's at the root of it. So uh, absolutely. Those relationships are an important piece of it. Jerry, I want to ask you a question because we got a chance to speak a little bit last week while you were here in town. And one of the things that came out of that conversation was um, and we were talking about the sheer abundance of just certain things and how they seem to manifest themselves. And a lot of the times we talk about success or all these pieces of wealth in life. And the, the thing we talked about, which was so simple, you were talking about how, how you said, I, I want unlimited tea or I want free tea. 
right? And somehow, some way in your life, you end up owning a farm, which happens to have be a tea farm of, of all things, right? Uh, so it's so interesting how you shift and, and work your way through life in those particular ways. So with that being said, talking about wealth versus success, how do you see the, the parallels or the opposites of those two things? You know, it, it, I, I, I love listening to this because I'm, I'm I it's like a reflection of my own doubts, worries, frustrations and um, and uh, worries. Right. But it's also a reflection of like the truth of who we actually are. And if you can really get down to the fundamentals of that, you kind of recognize that you you inherently are success. You inherently are wealthy. You inherently are healthy. You are inherently wise. And it's really our own stories and, and thoughts and beliefs that kind of put a filter over those, over those inherent qualities and um, cause us to project some sort of uh, result in the world. And so, you know, so when you bring up like the tea, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with manifesting things and can I like consciously choose like, you know, ways of being and how people show up and how I show up and so on and so forth. And one of my experiments was, um, can I get a free cup of, can I get a free cup of tea? I don't know where it's going to come from or who it's going to come from or, you know, why, why they're going to give it to me or anything like that. And and, you know, I've been doing this work for many years. So to me, it wasn't that big of a deal, but I wanted to see for myself, you know, like, can I manifest a free cup of, you know, most people do like a free cup of coffee. I was like, I want a free cup of tea because I don't drink coffee. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's going to come through um, Starbucks sometime, a place I rarely ever go. It's going to be some random thing like that, right? And, um, I think it was maybe a handful of months after I like set that quote unquote intention. And I, I wake up one day and I'm like, I live on a tea farm. <laughs> like I didn't live on the tea farm when I was asking for a free cup of tea. And now I live on the largest Mamaki tea farm in the world and I can get tea whenever I want. And, um, and so when it comes to to wealth and success truly it boils down to well what are you saying is true i mean money money only comes through people like like it has to you know the federal reserve is a whole organization full of people that you know print money whether you like it or not and you know politics or not um the 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 employer or the employee, the manufacturer. I mean, Vincent and I were kind of just talking about this yesterday. These are all people that money is literally just circu circulating through. And if that's true, then you're wealthy. You're connected to look at all the people you were connected to. Look at all the people that can help serve you. Look at all the people that you can serve. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's like, if you are a wealthy person, you're just someone who's just aware of their connections to other people. And, um, you know, wh whether that's I created it, I invented a thing, or, you know, I work at this, at this organization, and I'm, you know, working on these TPS reports. You know, and if you are, are aware of your own wealth and your own success, no matter what, the quote unquote money is going to flow because you're the most open conduit to that, to, <laughs> to the wealth that you, that everybody already, everybody already is. So, um, I think a lot of times when we talk about these terms, a lot of times it's just getting clear on realizing that it's actually not something we need to attain. It's something that we are. It's letting go of the things that say that we aren't, that the issue is. So true wealth is like 
<laughs> I would even say true wealth is the ability to realize that you already are wealthy. Very well said. Very well said, Jerry. So I want to transition a little bit here because I, if our audience is probably sitting here going, wait, I thought this talk was going to be about, you know, my roadmap to success. And I think this is a perfect time to kind of shift because why we wanted to start there is when you say your roadmap to success, you can't have a map. It's like the GPS in the car. You know, the GPS in the car only works when you give it a destination, right? The, the routes may vary, right? It might say, oh, well, traffic today here says, don't do this, do that. Uh, there's a road closure here, so don't take this route, take that route, even though you're going toward that same destination. So I think that's why this is a very, very relevant piece of the conversation is individually, we need to figure out what success is, looks like, feels like, what we really want that to be for ourselves, right? So that part of assessing that is, I think, the biggest, biggest piece of the journey, right? Now, once you have that defined, clearly defined, you clearly understand where you want to get to, where you want to be, what you want that to look like and feel like, then you can start to lay out the roadmap to try to get there. So that's why I wanted to start at that piece. And I think that's a critical part of it. Uh, and I know, uh, Vince, we had a conversation about something right along these lines not too long ago when we were talking about, um, you know, from, especially from intentionality, right? And a lot of the times we need to just get clear on what the intention is and not worry so much about the path to get there. Because once you've kind of laid out that intention, you truly know what that is, the mechanisms of how you get there, what street to take, when it, where you should go left or right, somehow magically kind of work themselves out because you are now focused on that destination. And, you know, you hear the term GPS all the time. And I, I use it a lot in my work to talk about your growth positioning system, you know, when you're trying to grow and, and, and move yourself forward. So same thing with, with the success thing you need to have a clear definition for self of what success is for you. Now we can figure out the steps along the way. So Vince, how about you share a little bit about some of that work you've done and really some of the realizations that I think a lot of our listeners will can kind of take away and say, yeah, I can relate to those pieces and parts of, of trying to manifest my way through a journey. My biggest realization is it's really simple. It's in order for me to uh, feel on a path of success, wealth, happiness, it's, um, it comes down to trust. And we, we talk about relationships, we talk about these things, and, and it's, it's my relationship with myself. So in order for me to achieve and feel like I'm, uh, I'm successful, I have to trust that I have the ability and control in my own power to be successful. And then if, if part of success is in relationships with others, I have to have the ability to be able to trust others. And recognizing my limiting beliefs, my fears, uh, you know, the, I believe the biggest one is, you know, um, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not, uh, I don't, I do not deserve this. Those are always the ones that are, that hold me back. And so that, that trust and confidence in myself is indicative of, if I can, if I will not trust myself, I will not trust others. So that's a lot of the self growth. You know, when we, when we, when we go down the rabbit hole of, of all the, the gurus and the mystics and the folks that we define as a culture as, as having that. And then, you know, I, I would, I would discuss this. I would, you know, talk to, all my friends, you know, the folks that I love talking about this stuff with, and then realize that I can, I can talk to the cows come home. It's really about how, how am I reprogramming my, myself 
and all those limiting beliefs. How am I, you know, rewriting the story and looking at things in a different way? And from a, from a data perspective, I'm a, I love data. You know, it's, it's looking at it as going, okay, you know, what I'm feeling, what I'm, what my limiting beliefs are, are actually not reality. It's, it's my interpretation of that. It's what, I, what's holding me back. So that's where the intention comes into. It's like, okay, going down it. Um, when I feel that, I usually call a friend, call one of you, call a mentor, you know, kind of re re look at some of that energy that's holding me back. I want to ask a follow-up question because I think trust is a big piece and it's, it's one, it's the, on my list of things too, that is a challenge. And simple question, do you feel, or do you operate from a position of trust is either earned or is trust given? And which side of that fence do you tend to operate from the most? Uh, mm. Well, I would say generally, in 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 my upbringing, um, trust is always viewed as something that's earned. It's enforced in our culture. It's you know, um, and then, you know, as I enter my fourth decade, it's something where okay, well, you know, if I look at everyone that I, that enters my existence, my realm. And I look at them with a level of untrust or question. Then I'm entering that relationship with mistrust or distrust. And then again, you know, this is where something happens where it's, uh, I feel jaded or let down or uh, a business deal. It's like, oh, you know, they, they did something to me that inherently was, uh, was for me bad. You know, whether it's something legally bad or, or, or whatever it is, relationship bad. You know, then it's just like, okay, well, then I should not trust these individuals. And that's definitely not something that's in my, my value, my core, is I, I see the value of others. I generally trust all. And then as one of my mentors would have said, you know, it's trust and verify. Yeah, I, I give you the full benefit of the doubt. Now, this is, this is where the boundaries piece comes into play. This is where it's like, hey, here's my intention. Here's, where, here's what I feel like is, is, is uh, uh, good or bad. And, uh, and that way, then it's a clear. You know? And if I did not share that, if I did not set those boundaries, if I did not, you know, when someone does or says something, it's like, hey, you know what? You said something. I just want to let you know. Uh, I took offense to it or it triggered me or something like that. Very, very true. And I like that you brought in boundaries because I think that's a big piece of um, not just the definition of wealth or success, but also just uh, how you navigate your way through life from that standpoint. What are your boundaries? Where where do you set those things? Because uh, we've all at some point in our lives, we're all old enough to remember the old pinball machines. Yeah. And you're bouncing off all these various things as you, you're working your way through that. Um, but within that, those parameters, as you're bouncing off the various, there's still walls at the very edge on each side that's always bring you back to re-engage in what's going on there. So that's, I always look at it as like, that's the boundary, that's the limit. And being able to clearly define and know what your boundaries are and be able to speak those, I think is where it gets dropped a lot. You may know for yourself what the boundaries are, but are you communicating those limitations, those boundaries to others so that they know where they can and cannot go or should or sh should not do or be with you because you have set those boundaries. And I think that's a key communi communication piece for self as well as your world. And having those boundaries that will, I think, keep you more on the straight and narrow working towards your success and achieving the goals that you want in life. Chris, I want to come back to you because you originally brought in the term happiness and how that plays into the importance of success or that that's an integral part of it. Is happiness something that you feel you have control over or is it more of something that kind of happens to you because of what's 
coming in from the outside world? Oh, I can definitely answer this question. I think it's a conscious decision. Um, I've gone back and forth in my life, um, and we've touched on this in the past, um, that I've admitted that I've had a victim's mentality. When you have that victim's mentality, you are summarily choosing not to be happy. I mean, to, to be honest with you. Now, let me circle, circle, circle this around and say, you know, in life, I thought about this for some reason when who have somebody was speaking earlier and I was like, you know, you, we face challenges every day. There are good challenges and there are bad challenges, but I think a lot of people, unfortunately, the way the, the world is set up, the dynamic of the world of the world, in, at least in America is set up is that we are so busy seeing what our neighbor is doing, what our neighbor has versus what we don't have or what we do have. And, you know, uh, the keeping up with the Joneses and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, I think you part of being happy is, is literally setting some clearly defined metrics for yourself um, that makes sense for you and not to be worried about what the next man's got. I mean, Brian, you just got a new car. Was that a month ago? Not even a month ago. Right. And I was genuinely happy for you because I'm, we're, 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 we're kindred spirits in the car, car, we're car guys. So whenever you, you look up, I'm like, man, he got a new car. And you know, I've been wanting to get a new car for, I've been talking about it since the better part of this year, which based on um, the way things are going, I had to readjust that timeline. And I'm probably looking at now, cause I said January of this year is probably realistically uh, as I see it, January of next year. Uh, God willing, and it could be sooner, but I'm not, it's not something I'm hung up in. You know, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, whatever I, what, whatever I do um, in my professional life and, and so far and so on will dictate when that schedule gets met. But it's not something that I get up every day. Now that my friend Brian has a new car, I should be unhappy because I don't have a new car, but that's a bunch of BS. Okay, I still should be able to be happy in the things that I'm doing because that's not what defines me. And just really kind of understanding where you are, you know, in your life. And I truly work at every day waking up choosing to be happy, even though there are some things that are that are in and around my life that don't bring me happiness. Okay. But I'm not letting that stop the show. At the end of the day, I got goals, I got dreams, I got aspirations. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm choosing to keep those things in the forefront of my mind, even though it's going to challenge and occasionally tax me emotionally and mentally, I still got to keep it moving because I know in my mind where I, where I want to go. And I think one of the key components, at least from my my thinking is from a success standpoint, you've got to get those things kind of in alignment or in sync so that what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you believe all feed from each other. And again, I think I, I, and I'm coming to you, Jerry, because you said inherently. So I think inherently we have these different components naturally, but also think that sometimes they can be very misaligned. One of my mentors would always say a phrase to me, attitude, awareness, and imaginal control. And it's, it's, and it's, it's such a simple phrase, but it really just boils down to what we've been talking about, choice, choice of happiness, that's any other. Now, the system of beliefs, um, to me, boils down to your state of consciousness or your, or the concept of yourself, however you want to call it, system of belief, state of consciousness, concept of yourself. And most people in the world have just accepted some concept of themselves, and a concept of self, of course, is a system of beliefs that they just accept to be true. So, um, little do people know that they actually have the opportunity to choose a completely different concept of themselves or a completely different uh, state of consciousness. Um, and I, I like to point people in the direction of, well, if you could be the most ideal version of yourself, 
how would X, Y, Z thing look like? How, how would your leisure look like? How would your, your um, relationship with your family be? So on and so forth. There's a whole series of things you could ask yourself what it would be the most ideal if, if, if Robin Williams as the genie came down today and said, you could have all, you know, the most ideal self, boom. Then I would ask that person, what would it feel like? I, you have the list, you know what that system of beliefs are, because there are, again, you're inherently wealthy, you're inherent, inherently abundant, all this stuff. Now, what filter do you want to put over that is the is the question of system of beliefs. So a lot of people are saying, will often go, well, I need to work on this and I need to, you know, change these things and blah, blah, blah. But if you can actually just hone in on, I'm actually going to change, completely change my concept of myself, the way I talk about myself, the way I see myself, so on and so forth. Great. If you were that person right now, because there's only now, if you were that person right now, how would you feel? How would you feel about yourself? And if you can actually just be with that version of yourself, even in this now moment, for an extra five seconds and just breathe as that man or woman, if you're listening, that body of beliefs start to show themselves to you. But here's the issue. Most people return back to the old version of themselves. Yeah, but this, yeah, but that, this is the way it's always been. This is just the way this person is. This is just the way my life shows up. Then why does this keep happening to me? This blah, 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 blah. I got to work hard at it, blah, blah. Great. That's your system of beliefs. I don't have to convince you. That's your system of beliefs. It's right there. Don't look at me. <laughs> look at yourself. So if you want to change your system of beliefs, change your concept of self. If, how do you change your concept of self? Look back at that list. What would imply that I was that person? Now be that person right here, right now, because if you be that person, you'll start to notice a new system of beliefs just starts showing up without any effort. But guess what happens? You go back to the old man. Yeah, but this person keeps showing up this way and it keeps happening. Why does this keep happening to me? This thing's about the bop, the bop, bop, the bop. Great. That's your system of beliefs. Don't like it? Go back to your list. What would it be like? Now, the state of consciousness, the concept of self, the system of beliefs that you most often return to is your dwelling place. The state that you most often return to is your dwelling place. That's who you actually are. So you actually have to get into the practice of returning to that new concept of yourself, despite what the external world is showing you. And if you can keep practicing that and repeating that and, and just, I don't believe these thoughts anymore. I don't say this to myself anymore. I don't say this about that person anymore. I, that's not, that's not part of my body of beliefs. Just like driving a car for the first time, you're learning how to drive a car. It's awkward and all that type of stuff. But at some point, you're just driving the car with one hand on the wheel and you don't even know when that happened. You have a new body of beliefs. So, you know, when, when, it, when it comes down to it, worthiness or deservedness or happiness or sadness, it's like it's, it all boils down to what do you say about yourself at any given moment? And... It, it, you know, um, was it, I forget, Emmett Fox had a, the seven day mental diet, right? And um, it's like, can you just have an uncritical observation of your own self? And just like, what am I saying to myself about myself? Is this actually within the ideal state of consciousness that I want to be embodying? Or is this just my same old lazy minded thinking? And just the same old, same old story. How much longer shall you tell that story? 
because scriptures, I'm, I always bring scripture. Somehow, some way, scripture always comes up. But in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you that where I go, there you will be also. So it's like, if I choose to be successful, which you already are, if I choose to be wealthy, which you already are, or healthy, which you already are, or loved, which you already are, and you persist in the assumption that you are that person, despite whatever the world of Caesar says, the world just changes. <laughs> it, like in 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 you find ease, you find less, you know, less fighting, less war, and all that type of stuff. So, and which again, only happens because of your system of beliefs. So much of what we tell ourselves and how we gauge and engage with ourselves day to day uh, makes such, such a big difference. And, and from that standpoint, and like you talked about, it's, it's the habits, it's those the set of beliefs and how we fall back to that. And sometimes it's just comfort because we want to be in our comfort zone. Sometimes uh, it is related more to that lack state. You're, you're in this place where, you know, you, you can't get out of your own way because it's either the abundance thing or the lack thing. And it's like, well, which, which one do I really want to gravitate to? Right. So that makes such a, a big difference to, to really get focused into that. So that goes back to the initial question of kind of where we started is what is it that you want? Right. And getting that truly defined uh, is, is, is such an important piece of it. And, and as you said, Jerry, that's where you start to migrate the beliefs because knowing what you want, but then starting to actually move towards those things is where the shift in belief has to happen. Because otherwise you, as you said, you go back to the belief system that you have and that's what you rely on. That's your comfort zone. You can't get out of that essentially that cycle of, of things that I want to talk about. And that brings me to the next piece I want to talk about, and that is commitment, right? Because we can say we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. But how committed are we to get it, to put in the work, to stay focused? It's the whole, you know, I'm going to lose 10 pounds at the beginning of the year. I'm going to go to the gym every day, blah, 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 and you best intentions. However, what, what happens six weeks later? What's last happened with the gym? Well, what had happened was, you know, I mean, we have a thousand excuses, right? So that's, I think, the most important piece of, if you want to look at getting to your success, is being committed to it. I mean, truly grabbing on and going for the ride um, and, and, and sticking and staying and, and, and seeing it through and understanding that. It may take longer. It may happen faster. It, the route may be totally different than what you expected it to be. The whole point is to stay committed to getting to that given end point, whatever it might be. Yeah, and, you know, that whole self-accountability side of things. When, when, when one, and let's stick with the, the gym analogy, you know, when one sets their goal of, I want to lose 10, 20 pounds. I want to build these, you know, whatever. I want to be healthy. And then they set their New Year's goals and they go through and then they, you know, it's like what everyone jokes about. It's like, oh, yeah, everyone comes for the first, you know, whatever, four months, first quarter, and then everything drops off. And so to me, that's that's like, you know, their old habits. You know, they're really, they, they, they are, they see what they want, they work through that and then they revert back to the old self as we've talked about it. And for me, it was, it was, um, it was a combination of both uh, a little bit of shame, you know, a little bit of guilt of it's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to the gym. I'm, I'm, and then, and then it's like, Oh, and then life, you know, life happens. And then you go back into your regular rigor morale. Oh, I'm too busy. Or I have no time or I have this, I have that. The excuses happen. And for me, it was really realizing that um, uh, grace. So it's like, okay, you know what? It, it's not, it is not just me. So it's, it's the accountability function. Yes, it starts with me, 
And then it's realizing, okay, well, in the past, I have not been able to be successful in this. So what can I do differently? You know, and, we, and everyone kind of throws in the whole definition of an insanity. So it's like, okay, well, if this is not working, what can I do? And, and looking at all the different options out there. And for me, it was finding accountability partners. You know, we, we often talk about the gym buddy. You know, which probably all of us have had a great gym buddies. It's like, hey, okay, you know, when you feel when you're feeling like oh less motivated, it's like okay, the gym buddy jumps in there, and then maybe it's gym buddies, it's uh, other trusted individuals, and you're know, going back to that reference of trust. You really got to work on trusting yourself, and then you trust others. What is the type of individual that you want? Because if you do not trust yourself. What will manifest, what will come into your life is someone who has that same level of anxiety, has those same limiting beliefs. And now you're just two peas in a pod and you're going through this whole thing where you're like, <laughs> where you're like, oh yeah, let's go to the gym. Like, oh, you know what? Let's not do that. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's not do that too. And then, and then now you just found an accountability partner that basically believes the same things you do. You've just basically said that same thing. And so for me, the hardest thing is to find others that, you know, again, we, we, we hear this often. It's like, be with someone, find someone who, you know, resonates at a higher frequency. It's like, that is what I want. That is not what my subconscious needs. So for me, uh, it's just about community. It's finding others that, that have that and see that and want that. And then now it's just the accountability between us all and having that trust. I love the piece about, you know, what you said there, Vince, about the finding someone who's, you know, operating at a different level, different frequency than what you are. Because if you find that's the kindred spirit, then all you end up doing is supporting each other's quote unquote bad habits, right? And usually fall back into that pattern. Not always, but on average, I think that's what's really going to happen in those scenarios. Um, for me, one of the things that I have started to do and, and to do a, a better job of is when I am defining what that objective is, is to not make it so granular because I think sometimes we, we do that and that's why we fall off. So instead of saying, I want to lose 10 pounds, I would then say, I want to start to live a healthier lifestyle period, right? So that then carries every day, through every day, through every month, throughout the year, if that's what you are committed to. And in that process, there's a good chance that you will lose the 10 pounds, right? So there's another way to look at it, because sometimes we think we need to boil our objectives down to these fine points. And then really sometimes it's the broader point we need to focus to, and the other things will simply just be a result. Of, of those different things. So I think that's a value as well. And that's one of the things that I, at least for me, has really started to work to just say, you know, let me define it at this level. And then the other pieces will naturally fall out of that as long as I commit to and stick with the, the, the broader thing that's at the top. You know, so interesting I, it, when Vincent brought up like the whole going to the gym thing, I was like, why do people choose to go to the gym? Like, it's just the habit that people choose. There are so many ways to lose weight. <laughs> like of all the infinite possibilities to exercise and lose weight and so on and so forth. But people choose, you know, this one, you know, beaten path called going to the gym. And of course it doesn't work for them because it's not really coming from them because they're coming from the state of, again, they're coming from the state of lack. Like I need to get this thing done. When if they were truly just being like, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm a healthy person. I, you know, I can totally see myself a year from now being, you know, totally limber and athletic. That person might come to find out that they enjoy skating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or, or that they enjoy uh, swimming or that they enjoy jump rope or dancing or what <laughs> so many ways, but we limit ourselves because of the lack. Again, we're like, I need money. So I better go to get into finance as if finance is the only industry that makes money. 
you know, or, you know, they'll, they'll say, I, I, I need to find the love of my life. So I better go to the bar as if, you know, or, or, or I need to go to the library or I need to go to church. And it's like, y'all are, y'all are coming from that, that same old man mentality. Whereas it's like, man, if you were truly free, if you were truly healthy, if you were truly, um, creative, you know, you would find what works for you and you would have so much fun doing it. There would be joy in that thing. And you wouldn't be, you, you wouldn't even hesitate to go do that thing you enjoy. And guess what? You end up losing 10 pounds. You probably ate chocolate bars and <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. I'm not recommending people go, go, go to the candy store. And, although if that's the diet you want, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I just wanted to say that it's like, he just reminded me that like, we kind of limit ourselves even in the solutions to a problem when it's just like, no, it's the, the solutions are inherently in us. So, you know, that's the reason why the gym doesn't work for so many people because they think that that's the only way. Agreed with you there. Uh, and, and that's the thing we're talking about the mechanisms, right? So when you are setting these goals and objectives for yourself, um, the mechanisms for each of us is going to be different as to how we get there. Right. And the traditional things might not be the thing for you, but you have to open your mind up to, to see those things and experience those different things. So I wanted to come to you, Chris, and how you have learned, especially uh, in this last couple of years, just the journey you've been on, how it has taken you on this path of really having to take a focus as here and broaden it because that has allowed many other things to come in as opportunities that you can choose to take advantage of or not take advantage of. But had you kept the focus so narrow, there's so many things that you might not have seen. <laughs> I got a lot of thoughts going on. You guys are bat batting around a lot of stuff. First thing I want to just address real quick is uh, the whole gym thing. Um, the gym thing is not for everybody. Um, and I feel I'm a gym guy. I mean, at least that's how I consider myself a gym guy. I've been going to the gym for 30 years. Uh, and there's a certain level of comfort that I de derive from going to the gym. There's a certain level of accomplishment that I derive from going to the, the gym. Um, the gym is more than just a physical place for me. It's actually a place that I, I can work out my mind sometimes. Um, it's a, it's a safe haven for me. Uh, if you've ever read anything about gyms, it's supposed to be a safe haven for all. Um, and so for me, uh, it's part of the checkbox program. So you got every day we have, we have these check boxes we want to check off. So for me, the gym checks it off. Uh, another thing is Vinny, just to quickly address you, uh, gym buddies. I've only had, I think two or three gym buddies in my lifetime that I really gravitated to. And we really, you know, pushed you because the whole thing about having a gym buddy, that person should push you, uh, towards your goals. Um, I haven't had my last gym buddy was George green and we were, I mean, I, I got some of my best work in when I, when I worked out with him, uh, cause we were, we were very, in this case, being like-minded worked out in our favor. So, um, that's how I want to address that. But as far as the certainty, um, the only, the only certainty in life is the choices you make. Okay. Um, and if, and I can certainly tell you, if you don't make the right choices, you don't have a chance. Um, on anything like that. But as far as you saying about, <clears throat> I think the, the question was surrounded around uh, broadening uh, your focus. Um, yeah, if you live, I mean, I think we've, I think a lot of us have discovered just through pure uh, activity and just uh, pure results that when you narrow your focus out, there are certain successes that will come from having a narrow focus. But in a lot of cases, you are really closing yourself off to other possibilities. And I think that that's where um, people have are challenged the most because when they, they keep it narrow, narrow, narrow means safe, narrow. Um, um, it says comfort zone. And we all know that dreams, dream, uh, comfort zones are where dreams go to die. Okay. Um, 
what I want to do, I've been, I've been sitting there chomping at the bit to, to, uh, and, and I think this will probably kind of play it, play into this was, um, cause we, you know, I keep looking at the roadmap to success and part of this with the certainty or even uncertainty is, and I think a lot of people, um, really, I don't know if I want to use the word fail at it. I think that they, um, consciously omit is, uh, goal setting. Now, one of the, I was reading something last night on the subject of what we're talking about today, and one of the one of the things that hit me square in the face was, and I thought I was like, what are you, what an interesting use of the word. The it said set audacious goals, audacious. The I, matter of fact, I knew what audacious meant, but I had to look it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and w- underneath that umbrella is divine define first and foremost would be defining your vision so you know clearly articulating what success looks like to you where do you see and we've talked about this in the past where do you see yourself in for me where do i see myself in three months from now six months from now a year from now five years from now so and what what i'm trying to get at is being specific about not only your career, but your personal life and your overall aspirations. If you are not committed to truly putting your mind around those three areas, you're just going to be a rudderless ship. Now, also with that is you want to, we, you know, it goes hand in hand is setting those smart goals. And I say smart goals, you know, ensuring your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and obviously time bound. And this should help you in tracking your progress and staying motivated. Cause that's really what this is about. You know what I mean? Um, Cause that's where I think we ended up really kind of uh, being our, our own worst enemy enemies is, is if we don't, you know, I think the, the thing that I've been most guilty of in my life is setting the bar too low. And I'm, I'm at this, this transitional phase right now with this new, career opportunity that is coming is staring me dead in the eyes right now. And I'm like, I'm in real time having to reevaluate my goals. As I said earlier, I mentioned earlier, as I'm starting to broaden my viewpoint, I'm starting to see that I had this, this could potentially have this opportunity could potentially give me the, ability to make some life-changing money and 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 let me back up it's not all about the money but i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you it's going to help it's going to you know i mean if that's the the proverbial championship trophy i'm all for it you know i'm or as they say i'm all for the smoke but you can't just be rooted in the one thought and not the other it's really about trying to figure out how to combine them and make them work. I'm big on the other thing I'm big on today is having that daily aspiration and or prayer about what it is I actually want and being comfortable in an, comfortable enough in your own skin and your own thoughts to be able to communicate that if not to the rest of the world at a minimum to yourself. And that's what I'm doing. And it's and I'll be honest with you. It's a little weird some mornings when I put that same aspiration out because I kind of look around like who's listening and, you know, I mean, if this big brother listening to me or, you know, so I'm I'm at a stage right now in real time. I'm trying to get comfortable with where it is I truly want to go, because I also think that in the past I haven't been a truly active participant in my own life, if that makes sense. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. And I think <clears throat> you opened up kind of the last thing I want to talk about when we're talking about this this roadmap to success, and that's the risk that you you have to be able to figure out how to extend yourself beyond wherever it is you are, because that's where two things, the, the main two things happen, well, the, the, and the big one is growth because you grow by that new experience of, of stepping outside of yourself, outside of your comfort zone. So taking risk. And again, that's why, again, one of those words that 
you kind of have to define for yourself. And again, it can be misused because we immediately say, think risk and we think negativity, right? That is a negative thing. And it's really not. That's just like we talked about wealth or what the, even the definition of success is. You really have to look at that word and say, that's my opportunity to grow, to expand, to experience new things. Um, you know, as Jerry mentioned a while ago, talking about when you first start driving a car, you're probably hella nervous and can I manage this and blah, blah, blah. But that's a risk that you took because what was the ultimate goal to get that driver's license, right? When you're young, you know, I want that, I want that driver's license. So you took the risk, put yourself at risk, other people at risk, took yourself totally out of your comfort zone to start to learn this new skill, right? 100%. So that needs to apply when you're doing your goal setting too. Definitely make them smart, um, but make sure that there is, a, and as what did you say, Chris, aud audacious, right? That's the risk piece of it. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when we talk about goal setting and, and taking risks, you go through, and Chris mentioned just a minute ago, you know, he's got this 30-day goal and a 90-day goal and a six-month goal and a one-year and a five-year. Write all that out. And this is the simplest way to create, A, the challenge, but also elevate, well, I'm going to use the term risk, and again, in a good way. Now take that same goal, keep it that that's still what you want to achieve, but cut all of them in half. So if you have a 30-day goal, accomplish it in 15 days. If you have a three month goal, accomplish it in 45 days, right? Mm -hmm. And let that all of a sudden drive you. What that'll create is sense of urgency. It'll also determine how committed you are or are not to those things, right? And it will, as you work your way toward them, it will create momentum, right? And momentum in, in its own right can propel you forward. So that's another thought that I had as we as we looked at this. So I want to wrap up. Uh, Jerry, I'm going to come to you first and have you just kind of share a final thought, you know, that you would like our audience to take away for today. Yeah, for me, you know, towards the end there, I was just like, man, this sounds like Price Pritchett. <laughs> but like all the things that we just talked about through all this, I'm like, there's there's a person who who literally – like wrote a book on what we just talked about in today's call, especially towards the end. And his name is Price Pritchard. And he talked about the quantum leap strategy and, and like truly entering into this new version of yourself, like, and dropping all pretenses and ways of being, um, you know, beforehand. And I, I had it on my bookshelf. It's, it's such a, it's a, this is, this is how big the book is. It's, it's wild. And he says, you know, essentially he says for us to go, you, you have to go for a breakthrough. Don't go for what you, you think is possible and so on and so on. Go past that. Right. And then he also says, quit trying harder. He shares this story about this fly that just keeps hitting the glass pane, keeps hitting the glass pane, keeps hitting the glass pane, despite the fact that just, just 10, 10 feet away, there's an open door. And they just keep trying harder and just keep hitting the glass, keep hitting the glass. And then he says, ignore conventional approaches. Think beyond what's, what common sense would allow. Suspend your disbelief. Focus on the ends rather than the means. Rely on the unforeseen forces. Choose this. This is the huge one for me. Choose a different set of risks. Like to choose a different set of risks is huge because you're making risk anyways in everything that you do, if you really think about it. But like, just like we just said about the, the driving the car, it's just like, not only do you put yourself at risk, you put other people's lives at risk to try to drive a car. I never, that never even, could, I never even considered how dangerous it is <laughs> to, to like be 16 years old it's a, it's a different set of risks, right? And so then he says, trust in the power of the pursuit, seek failure, get uncomfortable, open your gifts, fall in love, make your move before you're ready, look inside for the opportunity. And, and, and I mean, there it is. And it's just like, 
and everything we talked about today boils down to that. You want to talk about the roadmap. It's just like, that's where I'm going, people. Who's coming with me? <laughs> it's like, let's go. You know, only one stopping me is me. Let's let's do this. Get on board or step aside because I'm, I'm on this journey. I'm, I'm going, right? So absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, Jerry. Uh, Vince, what about you? Final thoughts for us? Mm, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that, that um, was stated to me, you know, maybe about, I don't know, five, six years ago, is this this data point around men who enter their 40s uh, are lonely. And, you know, it was interesting because I reflected on what I was feeling and where and whatnot. And so for me, in talking about goal setting and talking about achieving success and wealth, however we define that, um, and all these things, I'm like, you know, that, that for me is, is why I do the things I do now and grow and set those goals is, you know, manifesting others who, uh, I get to do this journey with, uh, and it's not just me. So I've talked about this before. Uh, it's something that, again, I work through and, you know, it's just, um, it's way more fun to do all this when you have great people with you. Just realizing that yeah. you're not alone. Yeah, I'm not crying. Absolutely. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Chris, final thoughts for you, sir. I thought about this which I'm starting to do lately. I'm thinking about the final thought before the final thought comes. I'm so glad you're thinking about yeah. that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a big part of, of how I'm reshaping my, my little universe right now. Um, it's a piece that I've plugged in recently, and I think it's going to serve me well in the long haul. With that being said, if we're being honest, life is a series of strategies, calculated risks, uh, aspirational goals, and rewards. And I can tell you that I didn't fully understand that when I was a younger man. I didn't. I believe that attitude will decide your altitude. And also you should be prepared to put into time to into whatever goal or dream that you have. And at the end of the day, success is defined by the individual. So whatever you do, don't let someone else define or rate your life's successes you'll be doing yourself a huge injustice. And I also want everybody to remember the journey to success is ongoing and every step you take brings you closer to the realizing your potential. Mic drop. <laughs> yep, mic drop on that. So I just want to end by sharing this thought. And I, gentlemen, I appreciate everything you've said and I concur 100%. And the only other thing I want to add is um, as you go through this journey, and we, we again, as Chris just let us know, it is an ongoing journey. It is you don't actually you know arrive, as we say. Uh, so you you keep moving forward, but as you go through it, um, don't get so stuck on the results. Try to make sure that you just truly are present in the moment as you're moving through it. And Jerry talked about it earlier. All, what we have is now. What we have today. Try to remember to appreciate and enjoy the now piece of this and don't get hung up on the result part of it so much. And sometimes when you get a certain result, you go, ooh, now I can go do this or now I can go do that. So it guides you to places sometimes you didn't even think you wanted to be or needed to be or had a desire to be. So just remain open. That's my final thought for today. Gents, this has been awesome as always. I really appreciate your time. To audience out there, as I always say, uh, take care, take care of each other. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye now.